In this video, I want to talk about the concept of R squared in fixed effects estimation and equivalently in least squares dummy variables estimation. So with fixed effects estimation, the idea is that we have our time demeaned house price is equal to beta one times our time demeaned crime rate. So this is just using the example which we've used in the last videos, plus beta two times the time demeaned unemployment rate. And finally, we have our sort of time demeaned idiosyncratic error. So when you run this type of regression using fixed effects in your particular statistical software program, you will get a value of R squared. And perhaps that value of R squared, which you might get out, might be 0.65. Well, what does that actually mean? Because essentially here, there are two different means which we could be talking about. We could be talking about the ability to explain deviations in house price away from its time mean or deviations away from its mean uh, across cities. So what do we actually mean by that? Well, it turns out that the R squared, which statistical software programs output and the one which we normally refer to, is the percentage of variation in the dependent variable, the house price in city I, at time t across time explained by our model. So in this circumstance, what we're actually doing is we're saying how well can our model explain deviations in house price uh, away from their time mean? So that's HPI or bar. Equivalent, well, not equivalently, we, what we could have done is we could have said, well, what's the ability of our model to explain the variation in house prices across city at a given point in time. So that might be another way of calculating the R squared. But it turns out that the R squared, which we're generally most interested with, is our ability to explain variation in house prices uh, across time or away from their time mean. Another thing I wanted to talk about here is the case of least squares dummy variables. So in least squares dummy variables, we know it's equivalent to fixed effects estimation, but what we have here is explicitly what we do is we do pooled OLS on our ordinary regression, which is house price at, in city I at time T is equal to beta one times the crime rate in city I at time T plus beta two times the unemployment rate in city I at time T. But then explicitly what we do is we include our range of dummy variables, we, we actually explicitly include m minus one dummy variables. So we have mu one times d1 plus mu two times d3, all the way up until the nth dummy variable in this particular case. And typically when we estimate this type of model via least squares dummy variables, we will get a value of r squared, which is very high. So it might be something like, or something which is greater than let's say about 0.9. So does that necessarily mean that we have a particularly good regression? Well, it doesn't really, because if we were to include dummies for both the city and frequently what we also do is we include dummies for the year, then it shouldn't be that much of a surprise that our model, even if we weren't to include crime and our unemployment, would do quite a good job of explaining the variance in house prices. So we shouldn't get too excited about having a high R squared when we are doing least squares dummy variables estimation. And of course, in least squares dummy variables estimation, we can test for significance of each of these dummy variables by first running the unrestricted regression where we estimate our model using these dummy variables and then doing a regression where we omit these and then comparing the R squares using our typical uh, restricted and unrestricted f-test. But in the vast majority of cases, these dummy variables are going to turn out to be significant. 